Titanium bars, people talk about them, people fabricate them, but do they actually know what and how they are doing and what should be done? Listen below and I'll tell you what it's all about. Titanium bars historically have always been an issue. Whether we had to cast them, whether we had to mill them, whether we had to double scan them, it was always a problem and that's why they went out of favor for a very long time. The mills were expensive, the strategies were hard to make, and it, and it required so much time and so much effort to actually make things work. Well, we're in 2025 now, and we figured it out how to make it very, very easy. Well, you'll say to me, why should I add a titanium bar? Full contour zirconia works very well. I agree. I have hundreds, if not thousands of restorations in zirconia, full contour, I have long-term results that are doing very, very well. So why switch? Well, as we learn and as we see more and more cases, we understand that one size is not fits all. We have to create a protocol. We have to create a cr criteria of when to use what and when to use what restoration to use where. Well, as simple as this, full contour zirconia can be used in the following. One, if your restoration is 22 millimeters or less, and that is pre-centered. So if you put it in the puck and at 1.25 of expansion, it's 22 millimeters or larger, you should look for a superstructure. If your restoration has three or more cantilevers, and I would say cantilevers, three or more pontics, you should look for a superstructure, a substructure. If it has more than 12 millimeters of cantilever, you should look for a substructure. Now, what's the advantage of full contour zirconia over titanium? Well, full contour zirconia will always be more aesthetic. It will look beautiful because you can hide the metal lines. More importantly, it's pretty easy to just add porcelain to something that does not have two parts. Sec thirdly, doesn't have any cement. That's the weakest link in the restoration. And fourthly, it's pretty easy to make. But let's talk a little bit about the disadvantages. As your zirconia gets bigger, the sintering stresses start to increase and more importantly can have fractures that you don't know exist. When you add porcelain, you're limited to the amount of bakes that you can add because heating up and cooling down the zirconia is not that great and you can create micro fractures. And for me, the most important thing is we rely solely on manufacturers to tell us that this puck that we're milling 25%, 23%, 22.2% bigger is going to center and shrink at exactly that a point. Now, because we go direct to the multi-unit with the Powerball screw, it needs to be perfect. And now we're expecting something that's 25% bigger to shrink exactly to 100% so that everything fits. We focus so much on photogrammetry, intro oil scanning, bites, and all of this fun stuff. But now we create a 25% error that can be shown up and possibly can fit. Now we can make things fit, but long-term do we have prosthetic issues with prosthetic screws getting loose, with screws breaking, restorations breaking. Is it because it's passive or unpassive because of the impression or is it because of the manufacturing process? So the disadvantage is that we have to have utmost trust in the zirconia manufacturing process from the companies that make our zirconia and our sintering has to be exact. Now, when those things are not exact, when you're going straight to the multi-unit, you start to have issues. And this is when titanium comes in. Titanium is able to be milled at one to one. And now we know that if our mill is exactly correct and calibrated and our impression is exactly correct and calibrated, we will have a restoration that will fit and be passive. And that's when titanium comes in. Now, we still have the issue that I've told you in the beginning about titanium being manufactured and having a hard time. Historically, for as long as I could remember, we were never able to mill a bar, manufacture a bar, and make the superstructure all in one shot. We'd have to, what they call, double scan it and remill it. With the advent of split files and our understanding of parameters, we start to be able to put these bars together. But again, then we had a software limitation. And most of the softwares out there were very, very difficult to be able to design these bars in an easy, efficient way that would be standardized. Well, a uh, software came out that sort of dictated the way the design of the bar should be. 
And the, re the way it was, it was just subtractive, and people decided that they're just gonna randomly design bars. Dentistry historically has always been dictated by science, by experiments, by publication, by clinical evidence, and not by the limitation of the software. And today I feel that the limitation of the software is what everybody is designing bars from. And we talk about the blender bar that is very simple to design that just creates a negative impression of the full contour zirconia. Well, here comes the power bar. What people don't understand is that the blender bar, the way it is in its current state, is actually going to create multiple, multiple issues that we try to get away by going direct to the multi-unit. Debonding and fracturing of the zirconia superstructure happens more than you actually think. This is when I decided that the power bar now needs to have a new design feature and have new places that are based on what we had in terms of science for our old bar. And here are the characteristics of the power bar. Look here. Introducing the power bar by Dr. Jonathan, a revolutionary advancement in dental prosthetics. Crafted from high grade five titanium alloy, this lightweight yet sturdy substructure offers exceptional durability. The power bar is securely held in place by the innovative Powerball 2.0 screw, ensuring a reliable foundation for all your dental needs. Its unique tripod retention and Sigma curve geometry maximize surface area between the bar and its superstructure, enhancing stability and performance. Designed for comfort, the power bar allows for easy milling, making it a perfect choice for dental professionals. And that's not all. This design actively minimizes common prosthetic complications, providing a seamless integration into your practice. Elevate your dental solutions with the Power Bar by Dr. Jonathan, where cutting edge design meets unparalleled patient care. So if you look closely here, you can see how the screw channels are identified and then we create where we want to have all the special buckle and lingual indentations in the cam. So it's going to create these indentations. You can see the tripod design and you can also see the way that the Sigma curve is done. Here you can see the actual result of what it looks like. So the surface area is a little bit better. Obviously this bar doesn't have the tripod and the Sigma. We just did this as a test trial. You can see how everything is now written down in there so that we create as much surface area for the bar without affecting the superstructure or anything like that. We do it in this way so that there is no undercuts and we know that we, the machine will go ahead and drill that. We don't want to do this by hand because we can hurt ourselves and more importantly, mess the integrity of the margin of the bar. This way we control it and the mill can actually do it for us. And now that you saw that the power bar has all these unbelievable features where a tripod design to, to create a resistance form to prevent the bar from dislodging when putting it together. Two, it has extra sigma curves on the occlusal and specific indentations or lines on the buckle and the lingual created from the hyperdent cam. This allows the cement to have more surface area to grab onto so that the bar will not debond because most of the debonds that we see is from the metal to the cement as opposed to the cement to the zirconia. So the next time you design a bar, the next time that you want to use a bar, either send it to us at Excel Dental Lab or make sure that you design it with a tripod design, extra surface area features, and more importantly, the correct height, the correct width, and make sure that it's always being held in by a Powerball 2.0 screw. Thank you.